All right, red, black, mid-range, mid-range stuff. Um, just kind of like reasonable cards in the format dot deck. One thing I've talked about a number of times before is I do think Glint Sleeve Siphoner here is one of the better energy payoffs in the format. So this card, when it comes to the player, it attacks, it makes the energy. You can spend two energy to lose a life and draw an extra card. So basically, this card draws half a card per turn, essentially. It can draw an extra card every turn. If you happen to hit something like a Harness Lightning that kills something smaller. Morning, Rabbit Zeus. Um, I think Glory Bringer is one of the premium pieces of top end in this format. Not only is it a removal spell, but it's also some very fast evasive threats. Before we started the introduction here, some people are asking questions about Field of the Dead. Um, obviously, you can play whatever you can. This format is a lot like Modern in the aspect of that in your mid-range interactive decks like this, if you really want to beat something, you could sideboard a lot of cards to beat that thing, and I'm sure you'll be very good against it. This deck is electing not to play super narrow cards against Field of the Dead. We have a number of cards that are reasonable there. So for starters, we have some flying threats in Rankle and Glory Bring another Rankle on the board that can go over the top. We've got a number of copies of Legion's End to clean out zombies while we kill them in the air. We've got copies of Ashiok to stop them from searching their library with the ramp spells. So we have, we have cards that have text there while we apply pressure. Could we play super specific sweepers or crumble the dust or other cards like that? Sure, we definitely could. And if you really want to play this deck and you really don't want to lose to Field of the Dead, gut half the sideboard and like put cards that beat Field of the Dead. There's a lot of different decks in this format. I know the league break before this one, we played against two Field of the Dead decks, and usually the knee-jerk reaction from Twitch chat is, hey, we need to play 12 cards to beat the deck we played twice in the previous league, but that's just, like, not how magic works. Sometimes you play the same deck twice in a row. Sometimes you go a dozen matches without seeing it. I don't... What, what decks in this format do I want to slaughter games? Can you, can you explain to me what decks? Be specific. So, Mills, I, I really don't want to hammer on you. I, I, nah, that's a lie. I do want to hammer on you. you. What you just did there is a textbook example of just not being... I just need to take a moment. All right, so... You suggested Harness Lightning, and then I said, give me what we'd like to cut and why we'd like to cut it, and then you gave me this giant paragraph that said a bunch of stuff that didn't actually answer my question. So, like, this isn't a political debate where we just, like, sidestepping the question is useful or the goal. And this isn't our corporate office where we're just, like, trying to fill fill downtime throughout the course of our day. Like, say, Jeff, these are the instances, these are the types of creatures you're going to play against. This is why Harness Lightning is better than this other card that you're already playing. Like, the details are so incredibly important and are what actually allow you to think critically and get to places that are useful with the deck that you're playing. The 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 whys, the what's, those are important. Telling me what the card does and like saying it has synergy with other parts of my deck isn't useful because there's tons of cards in Magic that have synergy and you have to have a reasonable way to figure out which cards are worth playing and which cards aren't. And like talking about the specifics of where these cards are good and why they could be better than other things that you're playing, that's how you narrow down what cards you're supposed to be playing and what cards aren't worth considering. So yeah, every everything you just said is correct. I agree with everything you just said, Mills, but what you said didn't answer my question. You didn't you didn't address any of the points I just asked about. And that's that's what I think a lot of people a lot of people don't don't get when they're when I'm like trying to ask them these things. It's not it's not that you're wrong, it's that I asked you a question and then you you answered a different question. 
It's like, I asked you what two plus two is, and you said the sky is blue. Yes, the sky is blue. But you didn't answer the question I asked. All right, so now I have to decide what I want to do this turn. I definitely want to, I want to decide how I'm going to kill this tireless tracker. So I could shock in the blood crypt and like get my Chandra going and just kill it. I could Culligan's command and like shock it, make them discard a card. I kind of like Culligan's command, shock it, make them discard a card because they're down to just two cards in their hand. The Culligan's command, shock it, make them discard a card also means that this also means that I get to play my Chandra next turn and upticker, which allows me to have a Chandra that ultimates more quickly. What do I think? What do I think about the Tom Ross SCG thing that's going on? I think late stage capitalism is something special and you should vote blue to save America. That's what, that's what I think about the Tom Ross thing. Isn't, isn't late stage capitalism great? Thanks for the 12 months of support there, Foresight. I appreciate that. You can dealer's choice those, Mogar. Thanks for cashing them in that way. So I can't cast the card I play this turn anyways. They don't really have anything other than other than Tireless Tracker. The Tom Ross thing is that Tom Ross got cut from writing articles at SCG. And SC, SCG is a business and businesses make decisions that prioritize their profits rather than prioritizing the thing, the good of their, the good of their employees. What's late stage capitalism? What we're currently experiencing in the United States and most of the world? Profits, profits over people. The, the idea that for-profit companies have the best interests of their employees at heart is just fundamentally untrue in most cases. Yeah, people are resources, not human beings is the, the base level. The base level is, yeah. Westvale Abbey's real scary. Yep. As wealth and power, power consolidates due to the nature of capitalism, the experience of the average human being is greatly diminished. The euphemisms and feel-good tactics of the past have become less charming and more obviously nonsense, and eventually people become disgruntled. Yep. My opponent is now clueless. I think I'm going to be fatal pushing a zombie here. I didn't fatal push a zombie proactively because I'm hoping they, like, attack both of these into my Chandra here. So that worked out. It's not bad. I think I'm just passing. Silly chat, humans are not people, corporations are people, that's why they get to control elections. Since corporations have more speech than normal humans, ain't that the sad truth? What did Chandra exile? A bunch of lands. When Chandra when Chandra immediately does damage and the card doesn't pop up on Moto, it's just a land. Yeah, yeah, tier threes are good for modern. 
Tier 3 modern submissions are A OK. -okay. So Chandra's going to two here. If we rip a Glorybringer and a land, I guess Chandra even lets us cast Glorybringer. Well. Alright, so we Legion's end here to keep them off of Westvale Abbey for a little bit. Let me get to Glint Sleeve Siphoner. They're at zero cards in hand, but they still have Westvale Abbey. Glint Sleeve Siphoner is putting me to four energy here, so I'm gonna get to draw two cards for the next couple of turns, which is nice. I don't believe a corporation is a person when Texas executes one. That's, oh, it's one of those painfully sad but true type things. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven differently named lands even if I trade here. Do I want to trade there? I don't think I do. Got four energy. I mean, like, again, like, this is all just, like, symptoms of late-stage capitalism, Rigeld. Like, authors for companies like SCG, they're not, e they're not even employees. They're just independent contractors. Because independent contractors, you don't have to give benefits to or pay, pay any type of reasonable thing to when you need to cut them. Which is, again, just a symptom of, like, profits over people. Like... Yeah, it's, it's crappy and it sucks, but like, that's just like the world we live in today. And yeah, it's def it's definitely crappy. Make sure, make sure you get out and vote. I think I'm supposed to board in Ramble Master here. It's not amazing once Field gets going, but if we can get it going before Field gets going, it could be very reasonable. This seems like a reasonable configuration. Maybe Murderous Rider isn't even very good. Just leave some energy in to make my Glint Sleeve Siphoners better. Yeah, we died. They drew a third field and they flipped an Ormidal. Um, if they've hit us with Ormondal, we're probably not winning. I mean, Kalitas isn't really a powerful threat in this matchup. I guess they have a couple of things that she hits, but in, in general, I don't think she's very good here. And she's not a four, a, a three power creature for four mana with no evasion isn't particularly good. This hand's fine. It's got it's got a little bit of pressure in Glint Sleeve Siphoner. It's got a, got some disruption in Thoughtseize. I think I want to lead on Siphoner here. This might be wrong though. It might be right to like clear out removal first. Yeah, I mean the implementation of the ACA definitely wasn't ideal, Scottish. Most, most implementations of most things aren't ideal on the first time around. I would, I would be surprised if anybody who worked on the ACA, like, honestly told you that they were happy with how everything played out. Yeah, Westvale Abbey was, was playable in standard. Uh, we did not win the previous game for those asking. It's going to be a little abrupt, yep. They drew a third field of the dead and flipped their thing. Yes, that's definitely true. 
Impl the implementation of the ACA was less than ideal because they had to make it less than ideal to try and get it through Congress. And get it through the Senate. Yes, yes, there were parts of the ACA that were very good. Was all of it ideal? Definitely not. I don't think anybody in good faith will tell you that all of it was ideal. But also, also saying all of it is bad is a bad faith position. Tron Travolta, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So keeping me around. They drew another tireless tracker. Yep. What if I just bleed for a card here and try and draw Glory Banger? Or try and cast Glory Banger? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pay four and draw a card. You're new here, Tron, but I'm just going to have to let you know if you want to say, give a dissenting opinion in this chat, you need to cite a source. So, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying if you want to tell me I'm wrong, you need to cite a source. And before anybody says, but Jeff, that's hypocritical. You didn't cite a source for the thing that you just said. I'm allowed to do that. This is my channel. This is a dictatorship and I'm the dick. Huh? I thought this was a democracy. This, this channel works exactly like the United States. Everybody gets a vote and then at the end of the day, whoever sent me the most money decides what happens. Thanks for the 16 months there, Beaks. I appreciate that. Welcome back. A dollarocracy. Okay, we've got uh, we've got Legion Zen to clean out the zombies boys and girls they're about to make. But like every land makes two zombies from there, and they're at twenty one, so probably dead from here. Speaking of giving money, when do I get my whale? Um, the. Uh, the bit emotes are supposed to go live in early December. Officially adding Twitch chat lobbyist to my resume. God bless. The golden whale, it requires a crown. So that's 100k bits. The regular, the regular whale requires 10k bits. Second hour, I promise. All right, well... I get to draw two cards next turn, and if neither of them are Legion of the Dead, we're probably dead. Do I get a whale badge for documenting out extremely fat? Unfortunately, I cannot give out whales. Feels, feels dead, man.
Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't know the bit the bit emotes were coming. Otherwise, I would have encouraged people to do bits sooner. I feel I feel a little bit bad for the people that invested in sub gifties as their Hoaglandia currency. It's fine. Needs to draw some lands, but like the spells are good. We're on the draw. We have a twenty-five land deck. We bought bought into the wrong cryptocurrency. Hey, thanks for the two months, Lawbringer. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. All right, some mono blue, eh? Think I take Master of Waves here. I think. And hand's a little bit rough. Our call against commands are not looking particularly good here. I'm just a fan of Corgis. Thanks for the biddies, Rabbit. I did upload a burrito center as as the 10k bit badge or the 1k bit badge. So if you have. If you have the uh, the little disc icon next to your name for having cheered at least 1k, you'll have a burrito center at the start of next uh, next whatnot. They just like drew a spell pierce here, right? I'm gonna stop on their upkeep. I'm doing this on their upkeeps so this way if they did draw spell pierce or dive down they have to spend the mana on their turn as opposed to on my turns so this way they can't play uh this way they can't play a tempest in this turn burritos sign me up thanks thrin well we ran off a bunch of lands here, but I think it might be too little too late. I guess if we I guess if we curve into glory banger, we might end up okay. Again, doing this on their turn to make them spend their mana on this turn cycle. I I see 100 percent of bits cheered. So Twitch takes a cut when people buy bits, not when you cheer bits. So when you when you cheer 100 bits on my channel, that turns into $1 in my pocket. And then I think again, I'm just going to run back the Culligan's Command, Discard Shock. Uh, even if I target the other Storm Tamer, this still gets countered by by them sacking the Storm Tamer. Yeah, it's you pay the person purchasing bits pays more than pays more than a dollar for a hundred bits. How much more depends on the amount of bits you buy. The more bits you buy, the less their their cut off the top is. Bits also come with a small bit of security for a streamer because there's no there's no risk of chargeback with bits, which is nice. Dealing dealing with PayPal chargebacks can be a monster. And by a monster, I mean it sucks because you always lose. And and people can like randomly charge things back on PayPal like up to a year later or something silly like that. Do I encounter those often? I actually been pretty lucky. I haven't had that many. I also don't take if so, if if a new viewer wants to send me a large donation in exchange for a service, like if someone wants to send me a hundred dollars or more and they're not someone who's been around for a long time, I require them to do it via bits and not PayPal. So like People, people need to be like a six plus, plus month sub for me to be able to take that money. Otherwise, I just refund it and don't do not do the service. There's just, there's just too much of a risk of chargeback. People who have been around a while are a lot less likely to do a chargeback. 
Uh, a chargeback is when the person who sent money says, I didn't get the thing I paid for. I'm going to go to one here. Brutal. So what do I, what do I need to have happen here? I need to like draw a fatal push. Even that doesn't do it, right? This is, uh, this is the tough part about playing an interactive deck, chat. I like, like, look at this sideboard, right? Like, almost none of these cards are good here. Like, you look at, you look at how my interaction lines up, and it's just, it just does not line up well. And like, a big part of the interaction this deck that we're hoping to lean on is like gifted gifted aetherborn here and that card just doesn't block well in this matchup do we try to rabble them i don't rabble master's not good in matchups where they have a lot of creatures like a single a single one two or two two like stops rabble master tokens I think I feel like this card might be a trap in this sideboard. Maybe I'm just supposed to have a more diverse selection of answers rather than trying to like have extra threats. I'm, like trying to think about what matchups I really want that style of effect in. I'm not really sure they exist in this format. Like boarding into Rebel Master is good against like con combo decks that don't play to the board and like control decks and like those two categories I feel like don't really exist here as of yet. They're not, they're not decks that I've seen well developed in this format. Any tips for dealing with Trumpy family members this Thanksgiving? Yeah, stay home. Make, make your Thanksgiving great again. Don't go see them. Silence. Silence is acceptance. Oh, that's a mistake. I should have played the Aether Hub, right? Because I missed a draw now. Can you explain why you think Gifted Aetherborn feels underwhelming? Instead of just taking a dump on the card choice I've made? Rather than rather than telling me my card choice is bad, can you like do me a favor and explain why you think it's bad? I'd appreciate it. How Trump is actually great for the LGBTQ community. In the if you're if you would like to attempt to change minds in a way that's probably not possible, Violet Journey, I would just recommend getting your ducks in a row before you go and just like have a bunch of references for things that have not been great. Because there's a lot of good examples of how his administration has not been great. Not not all of them are Mike Pence. A lot of them involve Mike Pence, but not all of them. They don't have a land here. We're going to be in a pretty okay spot. 
Okay, sweet. So I get to go... Ooh, that's actually a pretty good draw. So they have four cards in their hand. So do I go... Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna get my threat back down. So I'm gonna go Glint Sleeve and then Harness Lightning this. Net two energy. So up to six energy now. Charge in. Charge in my Siphoner. Mike Pence was impeachment protection. Yeah. Unless he's complicit. There's a good, there's a good chance he knew. I think your swamp art is wrong and I'll begin my 245 point argument as to why. I forgot to put full arts into this deck. Definitely forgot to do that. So I, I agree with you, my swamp art is wrong. A lot of, a lot of my family is of the opinion that it doesn't matter and they're all the same. And I've made it abundantly clear to them that people that vote against the best interests of my children don't get to call them family. You want to, you want to claim you love my kids and you want to do what's best for them then actually do what's best for them. Don't just pay lip service to that effect. You don't you don't get to tell me you care about my kids and then vote against vote against climate change and vote against their ability to have health care and other important things. That's not how this works. What you what people say doesn't matter. People's actions speak much louder than their words. And if their actions don't match the words that they say, call them out on it. Man, who's surprised that opinion came from a gift sub? Not me. All right, new rule. When a gift sub says something incredibly silly, I'm just banning them. Because that's how that's how this is going to work. Just get them, get them out of here. Two for two today. Someone said something, I was like, man, that's incredibly, that's an incredibly bad take. Two for two is just like, yep, that was a gift sub. The, the opinion I just removed there was you can't, you almost can't blame people because of where they get their information from. You definitely can. People's inability to think critically for themselves is definitely their fault. Especially, especially when they try to vote for the party that claims they're the party of personal accountability. All right, so Legion's End will give us some information here. How does that come up in practice? Trump supporters are a lot like vegans. They're not quiet about who they support most of the time. Ah, uh, yeah, this is our second league today. So, I have to burn all of my energy, but seems worth it to kill, kill Tempest in here. They have three cards in their hand. They have Harbinger, Master of Waves, Spell Pierce. a good rip so they have spell pierce master of waves one card i don't know is it a dive down it's a dive down
Maybe I should have harness lightning this. Just gonna go ahead and do this now. If they want to spell pierce this, that's fine. Means I can play Culligan's Command next turn. My father thinks the Dems can win if they stop prioritizing bathroom laws. Yeah, it's a lot easier to form opinions when you don't have, when you don't have to worry about those pesky facts getting in the way. All right, so they have Master and then one card I don't know. Murderous Rider's a great draw because it kills Master of Waves. Our stuff's lining up okay here. Let's see if they have another counterspell. They did not. They discarded Master of Waves. We've got, like, double Flame Tongue Kavu in our hand. How much are Historic build rounds versus submitting a deck? Uh, build rounds are 25. Goodbye, Gadwick. Ah, yes, the mighty, the mighty Cloudfin Raptor. I think I'd rather play Murderous Rider than GM Wrinkle here. Just because, um, Murderous Rider starts lifelinking and that health could really matter. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Dems have made their campaigns about bathroom laws the same way the new Green Deal is about stopping cows from farting. It's not. Uh, it shows energy over here on the right. There'll be a little number that pops up over here, so it does, doesn't list zero. I currently, currently have no power. Yeah, we tried. That might be, that's definitely a little aggressive, but I think trying to hit, the, the glory banger would close this game out really quickly, so I think trying to hit the land to cast it here is good. Help, my daughter is starting to stand and climb. My sanity is loose. This is where it gets hard, Worsen. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Kids are easy until they're mobile. The start the start of mobility up until like three and a half, four years old is the hardest period. I think saying it doesn't get much better is not true. My kids, my kids are definitely easier at, at four and five than they were at like two to three and a half or so. Thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. To quote my dad with kids, it's only the first 18 years that are hard. <laughs> uh. All right, so still in a great spot here. We get to Murderous Rider. This, uh, this Master of Waves. We get to play a second Master of Waves. Or we get to play the Murderous Rider. We get to bang the Merfolk Trickster and attack them for six. Kids require less, less micromanagement as they get older, but the issues they have do gradually become more complex. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. They said the first three months were the hardest. I don't know who told you. I heard that too, and I think whoever made up that idea was was like, I don't know what kind of kids they had. As someone, as someone who's gone through two children, I definitely think like, 
zero to nine months or so is like incredibly easy. You occasionally don't get to sleep a lot, but like the actual things that you're required to do is like super easy. It's like, they just sit there. There's like little blobs. Once your, once your child's able to move, once children are able to move, all they do is like try and end their lives. They're just like, oh, I'm going to run down the stairs. I'm going to run towards the sharp thing. I'm going to try and fall over. And your job as a parent is to make sure that they are unsuccessful. It's like all, all they do, just like every possible dangerous thing, they're just going to run directly at it. And your job is to make sure they are unsuccessful at charging it. All right, so I think I actually take Cloudfin Raptor here just because it's their, it's their way to curve out. Second, second Blue Devotion in a row, huh? To be fair, I work in construction. I feel like that's all my workers do as well. Rough. Stop scaring me. <laughs> Listen, I'm just preparing you for the truth, okay? Apparently my sister was a monster as a baby. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I shocked in the Blood Crypt here in case I draw another tap land next turn so that way I can like play that tap land and still harness lightning something. was good proactive two drop here is a good pickup for sure actual factual cloud fin raptor i thought you were calling something else that nope yep actual actual factual cloud fin I'm really surprised they didn't play Trickster out there. Feels weird. Just gonna like hold a retort up while I like slowly kill them. Tempest Jin. All right, what if I just killed this instead? And unfortunately means I can't draw an extra card next turn, but killing their Jin seems great here. Like I get to curve Rankle into Dragon now, which is, which is awesome. So you're saying I need to learn how to handle a self-destructive tiny human, basically. Pack and, pack and plays are great. Even once they start moving, it takes them a while to learn how to get out of a pack and play. Thanks for the three months, Greyhound Dog. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yes, correct. Yeah. Once they... Quiet, quiet is a bad sound. Noisy, noisy kids are kids that you can tell what they're doing. Quiet, quiet kids are doing something they're not supposed to be. So I'm not jamming Glory Banger here because they have Wizard Retort and they have a wizard. My daughter's three and hasn't figured out how to get out of the pack and play yet. They get out eventually. They all they all get out eventually. Yeah, I think Judge's Familiar is fine in the opponent's archetype. It's a very reasonable inclusion. What is a pack and play? It's like a mobile, it's a baby jail. It's a baby, it's a baby jail. I was gonna try and dress it up, but it's a it's a baby jail. It's a, it's a mobile baby jail. Mobile, mobile baby jail is accurate. So again, swift ending on their turn. So this way they untap and then have to use their resources on their turn. She crawled out of the crib last month in the middle of the night. Yeah, we actually, uh, when we had beds, 
for the kids. Their original cribs that we had were ones that converted into into beds, which was sweet. It was like a two-stepper, like the side came off of it. And then I think I don't even exert here. I think I just smash them and like try and run them out of the game. All right. Extra wrinkle because it blocks flyers. Um, trim a couple of commands. Trim a thought sees. Bring in legions and hope for the best. Fair coons. Leashes. Listen, don't knock it until you tried it. We actually en never ended up doing leashes for the kids, actually. We had a... We had a double stroller that had straps on it, like a car seat. That you just like buckle them in and they couldn't get out. What matchup is Angrath for? I'd imagine the mid-range and control matchups, but I'm honestly, I think these Rabble Masters and these Angraths are some nonsense. I feel like these should probably be other cards. It's a leather-based range limiter. That, that's good. I like that. Happy Turkey Week, Crazy Gas Beam. Thanks for the two months. Welcome back. Um, I think this is a mulligan, right? Especially on the draw, I don't think I can keep a hand with no removal. Seems like not great, but I think it's in the range of keepable. I used to judge parents using leashes as a teen until I realized how lucky I was to survive my childhood. As someone who basically had no interaction with who, who who as someone not no one as someone who really wasn't around kids growing up i think my biggest misunderstanding of children as a teenager and a young adult was the idea that parents should be able to just control their children like you see that kid like having a fit or a breakdown in the grocery store and you're just like man that parent really sucks. They can't control their kid. And like the actual understanding of like, that's just not how kids work as you, as you actually have them. It's just like, yeah, they have treasure crews in their deck. That's an interesting decision. Not, and not only that too, like once children get a bit older, like in the, you know, let's say four, four to six range, you can start really expecting children to behave a little bit. Even at that point, you just like can't know by looking at a child, like if that child is special needs or has some type of disorder that like doesn't allow them to interact or behave in the same way you'd expect a child in that age range to interact or behave. Hey, thanks for the host of the VD Explorer. Hope you had a good stream. There's a post on Reddit about a tutorial video on resetting GE light bulbs. The hoops you have to hop through would both infuriate you and make you laugh. I don't I don't know what that means. How, how do you reset a light bulb? I think I'm just playing Chandra here and like working through their counter spells. And then I think Rep. So 
Rather than downtick Chandra and have her die to another flash fish here, I'm just going to go ahead and plus and kill this. So this way, if they have another two mana instant speed creature, my planeswalker lives. So Thass is still relatively far away from turning on. I want to Aether Hub before I draw a card with Chandra, because if Chandra flips a 5-drop, I want to be able to cast it. You have to cast the card Chandra flips right away. Yay, flying threats. Yay, flying threats. What is in the opponent's hand? Like, opponent really getting supremely punished for boarding in more expensive cards. They'll having a little bit of aggressive slant here. It started out with a gift. How did it end up like this? It was only a gift. Thanks for the quarter of a year, Investigate. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Famous researcher about kids' behavior has a saying that about two parents, you're a shepherd, not an engineer. You have some control over the environment the kid is in, but you do not directly control how the kid turns out or acts. Yeah, that's true to a degree. Reprint Vizardrix. Glad to see your shillings aren't going to waste, Jen. Good morning. Yeah, this hand's fine. You know, hopefully it's a matchup where Fatal Push and Dread Boar have text. Like if they're a field of the dead deck, this, this hand's pretty bad. Hopefully they're a stompy deck. Sweet. Push that one off a cliff. Hope it's not too cold by you today. Not any colder than normal. We're not like Polar Vortex bad. Hey, thanks for the 15 months, Dwarf Lord. They stomped my face, chat. That was rude. I like my face. Am I dread boring bone crusher? I feel like I'm not. <clears throat> I feel like I'm just planning to block next turn. Do you have any opinions on zombies and historic with Crypt Breaker? Uh, yeah, it's probably sweet. I don't know. It's not something I've worked on, Dumping Truck. My, uh, my gaming time outside of the stream has been a little bit limited of late, so I haven't really been playing or working on much of anything that's not, like, directly stream or streamer queue related. You're about to get double stomped here. Rough. Maybe I should have just dreadboard this and attacked them last turn. That's probably what I should have done. I'd be up uh, two life at this point. I'd be up uh, six life at this point because I wouldn't have taken a hit and had a lifelink for two. Yeah, if we don't if we don't draw some spells, it's not going to be pretty. Glory banger would be a great draw. All right, Harness Lightning's at least uh, at least a removal spell, huh? Oh, you know what? Let's actually let's just go pick my Siphoner back up. You discard a card. Some people were criticizing Siphoner earlier because we haven't played matchups where it's like lined up very well. But like the fact that it's like a removal spell that can that can pressure Planeswalkers that like also gets rebought by Culligan's Command, I think is a big deal. I think this, I think this card's super reasonable. Man, we're about to get flipping Ember Cleaved, aren't we? Vomit. Are we dead? I think we're dead, right? Pretty close. 
That was a good draw. Remember that time I burned my Culligan's command already? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Yeah, the, my sequencing this game was not great. I definitely could have, uh, could have been in a better spot. That turn, that turn that I cycled the lands that are dread boring and attacking was a big deal. Pretty sure I'm not supposed to cast that. All right. Good beats, good beats. Draw land. <laughs> oh, this is yeah playing playing interactive decks lol 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 interactive decks All right. Yeah, Rankle, Rankle could have could have been a live draw there. That's why we draw with it. Oh, you're saying I should have played the other Tron draw. I think you're right. I had enough mana to do that, right? I could have I could have played Chandra and then hit Rankle. Hit wrinkle off that. I, th I didn't think I had enough lands, but you're right. I had, I had played enough at that point. Is it possible to do another pioneer today? Yes. If you'd like to cut in another pioneer, I'll take a third one for today. In. These. This is match five of this league already, right? This is match four. Yeah, I'll take another one still. I like money. I don't have I don't have a super firm cutoff today, so if historic runs long, it can run long. This deck's been pretty middling. Have not been super impressed. We're two and one in the league. But we beat Mono Blue Devotion twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for the two years, Skip Dash. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to go to the fifth match. We're done. We're dead. I think I, I, think I missed sequence a little bit in that first game. It's like never beating a Shaper Sanctuary in a million years. This is the five months ring. Yeah, I just... I feel like if your deck's gonna be these colors with these narrow ranges of interaction, it probably needs to be more aggressive than this deck is. This was this was a list that posted a 5-0, and like, obviously you can have some okay matchups. Like, we, we beat Blue Devotion pretty handily twice, but... I think there's just a range of enough things in this format that your answers aren't good enough against that you need to just be able to kill people if you're going to play a deck like this. I don't even know if Pack Rat qualifies, honestly. Pack Rat's not super aggressive and it just gets blocked for forever by field zombie tokens. It's 
Speaking, speaking of. I think I'm just gonna take their double ramp spell here. Yeah, yeah, I think I think a a black aggro deck with like some red cards in the top end could be good. I've seen there's been some builds that have gone around that like play unlicensed disintegration and Chandra that seems super reasonable. I am excited for historic Green Moose Dress. Definitely playing playing Historic the other day definitely felt like felt like reminded me I got to play a bunch of the decks that I was really enjoying in previous formats. So excited to dip into that some more. Yeah, the hub and harness lightning like enable glint sleeve siphoner. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, this one. This one was a bit of a miss for me. Thanks for the giant tip, Scholar. I appreciate you. Yeah, so to wrap on this before we dive into one more Pioneer deck today, since Scholar is absurdly generous as always and cut one in. Um, this was a bit of a miss for me. I think trying to be this mid-range you're controlling in these colors is just not good. I think I'd, I'd much rather be mid-rangey and like soul tie or something of that nature rather than this skip dash thanks for the biddies i appreciate it i i believe scholar already has a crown if i if i recall correctly so he'll they'll have a golden whale so yeah overall i think if you want to try black red i would try something more aggressively slanted than what this was rather than trying to be as interactive as this was looking to be all right i'm gonna hit a quick ad roll and when we, when we get back, we are going to play, we are going to play a little, little bit, little bit of this. So some possibility storm with, uh, Kiora, Kiora and Glorybringer sounds, sounds great. So we're going to do a little bit of this when we get back. BRB folks, thanks for hanging out today.